Welcome to the Front Seat Life Podcast. This is Jessica Butts, your host and CEO and creator of Front Seat Life, where I help you be unapologetically who you are in your life, love, and business. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Front Seat Life podcast. This is Jessica Buss, your host, and I am so excited today to talk to you about the four characters that I've really created. So you're not going to find this anywhere else. This is my specific work based on the Myers-Briggs. So as you listen to episode one, hopefully, if you haven't listened to episode one, I would actually go back and listen to episode one because today is not going to make a ton of sense if you haven't listen to episode one. But I talk about how obsessed I have been with Myers-Briggs basically since I was about 20, which is 25 years. Holy cow. (laughs) And as much as I've been obsessed with the work, I do realize that there are a couple of things that are wrong with Myers and Briggs. And the main thing is, is that people don't understand it. They forget their letters. It's not very user-friendly, if you will. And I am someone that I like to joke, likes to dumb things down. I like to make things easy to understand. I don't love people who pontificate I don't love books that go on and on and on or try to make things more confusing than they need to be. Like, we're busy, right? I'm a busy human being. You're a busy human being. Like, let's just make this shit understandable and easy and user-friendly and give it some language and framework that we can actually use in our lives. So, That is what I came up with. And I have to say, I wish I actually knew how long that it has been since I've created this, but it was when I very, very, very first started my business. I wanted to do workshops. I wanted to bring this to people. And probably six or seven years ago is how long it's been. I did my very first workshop and there were three people there. And one of them was my mom. (laughs) So we all have to start somewhere. And there will be many, many podcasts to come on starting your business and what that looks like and determination and system structure, singular focus, all the stuff that I've learned over the last many, many years of starting my own business, restarting my life, leaving a marriage, leaving corporate America, and again, starting being an entrepreneur. But that's not what today's topic is about. So in that workshop, I realized I needed a way to explain this stuff, this content from the Myers-Briggs that I've been obsessed with for, for so many years, yet I needed a way to explain it. And so I don't know how ideas come to us. Elizabeth Gilbert talks about it in Big Magic, that it's like a butterfly and it just comes and it lands on you. And I really feel like this idea of this car analogy was very much like Elizabeth Gilbert explains. It just kind of landed on me one day. And that's what this episode is about. It's about the four characters to deepen your understanding of personality type. And again, there's obviously introversion and extroversion, sensing intuition, thinking, feeling, judging, and perceiving, which I explained in episode one, that each and every one of those dichotomies is utterly fascinating and life-changing in understanding yourself and those relationships in your life. So again, each of those is fascinating and can help every relationship in your life, including the one with yourself and your business. However, There's a deeper understanding, and that is what this whole kind of live your life from the front seat, front seat life, and then my second book, Don't Do Stuff That You Suck At, is all about. So let's jump in and talk about these four characters. If you haven't yet taken the free assessment on my website, this would be a really good time to go do that because you're going to be able to follow along in a much more clear way, and the assessment actually tells you what these four characters are based on off of your personality type. So that's at jessicabutts.com. It's the second little section down on my website. It's free. You will be added to my list, but you'll hear lots of great content from me. But that will tell you, you know, based off of that assessment, what your personality type is and then who these four characters are, again, to help you understand. So let's jump in. There are four people in your car. So I want you to imagine if you're at home, maybe pause for a minute and actually close your eyes 
And imagine yourself in your car. If you're driving, please don't close your eyes, but you might imagine yourself literally in your car. I know a lot of you listen to this while you're working out or you're driving or or whatever, wherever you are. So imagine yourself in your car and there are four passengers in the car and all of them are you. All of them represent a part of your personality. And I want to go through these four in order very clearly so you understand when they come out and where we need to be spending our time. Because this really is the core of my work around living your life from the front seat and not doing stuff that you suck at. So the first two people in the car are good people. They are people in your front seat. Uh, Again, I wouldn't name my business front seat life if it wasn't a good positive thing. And these two people in the front seat are called your driver and your co-pilot. So you might even imagine as you're driving right now, wherever you're driving to PTA or to work or to the gym or to the grocery store, whatever you're doing right now, is as you are driving, you are in charge of your car. And that part of your personality is very much like the driver of your car. I like to consider this person your best self. If you are an extrovert, this is, again, what you are giving to the world. This would be a good time to kind of pause and go back and listen to episode one, uh, because I talk a lot about this in episode one. But your driver, if this is extroverted, is what you are giving to the world. So you are literally giving your best self away. You're giving this to other people, your, your sisters and your brothers and your coworkers, and those people that are around you get your best self. If you're introverted, your best self gets saved for yourself and those that you invite very close to you. And therefore, this person is what the world sees if you are extroverted. So as you're out in the world and you can imagine this person going out into the world, this is what the world sees of you If you are extroverted, this is how God designed you. And I know that I'm a cursor and I talk about God, but this is my jam and this is my podcast and this is what I'm going to talk about. I believe in God, but I'm also someone who says fuck a lot. So just stick with me on this one. And so this is what the world is going to see of you. And this is also your best self. Your co-pilot is equally important. And I know this gets confusing for some people because some people say, well, I don't understand how it can still be my best self if my driver is my best self. But these two people, your driver and your co-pilot, if you imagine yourself in your car right now, these two people are what are making the world go round. One is extroverted and one is introverted. If you are an introvert, your driver is introverted, and what the world sees of you is actually your co-pilot. This is your second best self, and I'm going to give you an example uh, at the end of this so that you can like really walk through this with me. These two people are how God designed you. This is the stuff that you are naturally and innately good at. Back in the 80s, there was this whole movement of be well-rounded. And I have said for years, I think being well-rounded is a bunch of bullshit. Uh, We are not meant to be good at everything. Period. End of story. We are not meant to be good at everything. Those parents that are listening right now that expect your kid to be a great artist and really great at math and science and all the stuff, it's not possible. We are not designed that way. We literally come into this world innately and naturally good at certain things, which is not everything. So for an example, I'm going to give the example now, ENFJ. Partially I'm doing it because this is my type, but I know there's probably a lot of ENFJs listening. Extroverted, intuitive, feeler, judger. ENFJs, their front seat, the driver is an extroverted feeler, which means they give the world their best self through their heart. They're all about connecting, building relationships, loving on people, and just being out in the world with their hearts wide open. Their co-pilot 
my co-pilot, other ENFJ's co-pilot, has to be introverted because their driver is extroverted. Again, this is a balance of the two in your front seat. And so I had a, a client a couple of years ago realized that she was pretty confused about this and she was an extrovert. And so she thought she had to always be extroverted to be her best self. And I thought, oh my God, I've done such a disservice to you because she was so <laughs> exhausted, right? She's always thinking I need to be extroverted instead of realizing that in our front seat, this balance of these two one is extroverted and one is introverted. And so that introverted part of an ENFJ, that co-pilot, you're technically your, your other best self for ENFJs and myself in particular is introverted intuitive, which means in our heads. And by the way, all of this is mapped out in my book, Don't Do Stuff You Suck At, and the first book, Live Your Life from the Front Seat. It's literally laid out for you. It's on my website under the resources tab. There's tons of information. All of this information is available in those books. So you can just get it on Amazon. It'll be here tomorrow and it, you know, super, super fast. And you can walk through all of this information. Again, I like to make this as simple as humanly possible, but it's pretty difficult to walk through 16 different types, you know, in an hour episode. So stay tuned for that. I will cover those things as we go along, but you can go grab the book too. It's, you know, 16 bucks, 18 bucks, something. So introverted intuitive means you're in your head thinking about ideas all the time. One is extroverted. The driver is out there in the world, building, being creative, being loving, being kind, building relationships, giving your heart, connecting, doing all of that kind of feely stuff. And then the other part of us, the other part of our front seat, which makes up 80% of our energy. And I pause there for a minute because it should be 80%. It needs to be 80% of our time and energy. So that co-pilot, that introverted intuitive are ideas, being creative, mind mapping, writing books, doing a podcast, ideas, 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 ideas. So when I, I'm just going to use myself for an example, or you, if you're an ENFJ, when we are doing these two things, being out in the world, connecting, even if it's through a podcast like I'm doing right now, if it's through uh, a books or being with a, a friend or deep connections, those kinds of things, and being creative. When ENFJs get to spend 80% of their time doing that, in my opinion, you cannot fail in life. You will be happier you will be successful. You will be fulfilled. But part, a big part of the problem is that most people, one, don't understand this. They try to be well-rounded. They try to do stuff in their backseat, which I'm about to talk to you about. And they try to do all of these things that they're not naturally good at. We only have 100% energy. That's just a fact. We have 100% energy. This is just like a, a universal law that we have 100% energy. So now let's talk about your back seat. Those back seat drivers are no fun. So this front seat energy, again, when we are spending 80% of our time there, it is like, as I talked about in episode one, it's like the beach ball on the beach. It is easy. It's flowing. It's natural. It's just, we're on the beach pushing a beach ball or kicking a beach ball down the beach. There's zero effort. The wind is taking it. It's effortless. And it's effortless because it is innate. God designed us this way. We are brought into the world, whether you believe in universal energy, God, what actually, whatever your beliefs are, we are born with our personality type. So again, when we do things that we are naturally good at, it is just easier. It's a flow. I don't know about you guys, but wouldn't you rather do things that you're naturally good at, that you're meant to be doing in this world? I know I would. So now, sorry, let's go back to the backseat. I get fired up about this topic, as you can tell. So the backseat, dreaded backseat drivers. There are two people in our backseat. And the first personality part of our type or the first personality, the first character, however you want to think about it, is what I lovingly refer to as the drunk uncle in the backseat. 
<laughs> this person is like the part of your personality that is a drunk person doing it. So I don't know about you, but I will admit that I have been drunk a few times in my life, uh, more than a few, and it's never, ever the best part of me. Yes, I'm funny and yes, I'm silly, but I'm never going to sit down and do something in my business when I'm drunk. I'm never going to, well, I, I sh have done this, but I shouldn't have, had an intimate conversation with a partner, gotten into a fight, done something. Basically, when you're drunk, just be drunk or... Sometimes you just need to have another drink and pass out. This part of your personality is like a drunk doing it. It's messy, it's sloppy, it's literally inebriated, right? That's how we are when we're intoxicated. It's it being and doing something like you're intoxicated. All you should do when you're intoxicated is be intoxicated. <laughs> you're not gonna sit down and do something in your business, have a deep conversation with somebody. It's just not a good idea. So this part of our personality is all the stuff that we suck at. I hope to God, I don't have to convince anybody listening right now that you suck at certain things. If you don't know that you suck at certain things, you might be needing to listen to a different podcast because the reality is we all suck at something. Every single one of us. Again, I lay this out in the books. The free assessment lays this out for you. It tells you based on your Myers-Briggs type what the things are that you suck at. For an ENFJ, for myself, for any ENFJ listening, these are details. This is sensing activities. Sensing activities are minutia, details, data, doing QuickBooks, uh, a proofreading, all the little minutia things in life or your business are things that we suck at. Conversely to the beach ball in our front seat, the easy flow, go with, you know, when you're in your flow and it just, everything is simple and easy and you're like, yes, dude, I want more of this. Conversely, our back seat, this drunk uncle in particular, is literally like pushing a boulder up a hill. How many of you know that feeling? I know you know that feeling because you're an adult and you're listening to this podcast. It's impossible for us to have not gotten to be adults without doing things that we've sucked at. This used to be my HR career. When I worked in human resources and I was in the wrong marriage and I was doing details all day and I had to go around and fire people, like I didn't care. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm just so not that person. And I had to like boss people around and and tell them you're not following the rules and fire them for, oh, I hated it. I hated it. Or doing uh, minutia or doing Excel spreadsheets like, oh my God, I'm absolute worst. And I spent years and years, years of my life. And I know so many of you are doing the same thing right now or have, have been there. And when we are spending our time doing these things that we suck at, it is like pushing a boulder up a hill. And when we do that all day, every day, we are exhausted. Am I right? Can I get an amen? We are exhausted. When I was in this job, I would come home. I worked seven to four. It was such bullshit. I had to like be there at 7 a.m. Like what a bunch of bossy people. Like it was so stupid. I, you know, I'd say now I'm totally unemployable because I just don't like to follow the rules. So don't tell me when to be here or what time to work. Like I work all the time now, but I do it for myself. So it's so much better. But I would get there at seven. I would leave at four. I would come home. I would literally put my sweats on and I would get into bed. At 4 p.m. or 4.30, whenever I would get home, I would turn on Oprah. That was back in the day when Oprah was still on. And I, it was exhausting because I had been pushing a boulder up a hill all day long. I was not in my front seat. My front seat is, let me talk to people and let me be creative and let me think outside the box. And that is what energized me. When I have to do the details and all the stuff and bleh, all that grody, wonky energy pushing a boulder up a hill all day long, I was exhausted. And I'm guessing this is landing on a few of you right now. You're getting this because you've, you're either in it right now or you've felt it.
Hey people, here is your chance of a lifetime to go on an amazing, amazing life-changing retreat in Maui with the incredible shamanic healer, Jenny Dawn and I. We are teaming up our superpowers. We are putting on, again, truly a once in a lifetime retreat this coming March at the Sheraton in Maui. It is Wednesday, March 13th through Sunday, March 17th. There is going to be truly life-changing content unbelievable community, incredible other people. I am truly thinking of this as a year of therapy in five days. As a former therapist, I know the benefits of going week to week, but there truly is something powerful about coming together, doing all of the work in a gorgeous place. There is going to be fun. There is going to be girlfriend time. There is going to be learning. There is going to be deep, deep work and all in one of the most life-changing places I have ever been, Maui, Hawaii. There is incredible, feminine, gorgeous energy there. We are going to be talking about all of the most life-changing life skills that she and I have, and it is going to be the best way for you to spend five days that I could possibly imagine. So come join us. The link is below. There are only probably five spots left at this point. Um, so make sure that you grab a friend, you come, you can have your own room, a separate room, but I promise you, you are not going to want to miss the event. I cannot wait to hang out with you in Maui. See you there. So something fascinating happens when we spend too much time doing stuff that we suck at. And let me also say this, there's other things that can trigger the last person in the car before I get to this person. And the, those things are definitely what I'm talking about right now, doing too much stuff that we suck at, being stressed out. You know that feeling of your back is up against a wall you're out of energy, you're doing all these things that you suck at. Launching this podcast was one of those times for me. I mean, it was just a lot of energy, a lot of details. My beautiful, amazing director of operations, Stephanie, just did a lot of this stuff for me, but it was a lot of energy and a lot of work to get all of these things in place and done and on time and details and all of that. And that feeling, right? I, I, like my energy is, I'm getting anxious right now, even thinking about it, because your back is up against a wall. You're stressed out. You don't have any time. You're not in your flow. Dude, your flow is, yeah, this is great. I feel awesome. The backseat energy, doing stuff that you suck at all the time is anxious and you're getting <gasps> that feeling, right? When that happens, something incredible happens. Our bodies shut down. And every other person in the car, your driver, your co-pilot, and this drunk uncle go to sleep, and the last person in the car wakes up. And this last person in the car, I have lovingly named your baby in the back seat. Babies are immature. They're underdeveloped. They literally have no verbal communication skills. They have not learned how to grow up. They have not matured. They are their babies. You're acting like a baby would be the analogy. And when we are backed up against a wall, something amazing happens to our brains. We have a reptilian animal instinct response. And animals, when they are backed up against a wall, they turn on a safety mechanism. This is like our uh, prefrontal cortex. If you imagine our brain, the front of it is called our prefrontal cortex. And I'm going to nerd out here for a minute, so hang tight. That prefrontal cortex part of our brain is called our rational brain. It's the part of us that allows us to have reason. It is the part of us that allows us to take a deep breath, to take a walk, to take a breather, to be rational and be in our right mind. Well, there are times in our lives when we have to protect ourselves, just like animals need to protect themselves. And we quite literally flip our prefrontal cortex and our reptilian brain comes out. There's, so there's this brain stem, if you can imagine, like back in, you know, anatomy, there's this, or if you're at the doctor and there's one of those, those brain uh, models, our brain stem 
is our uh, reptilian brain. And when we are doing stuff that we suck at. We are in this place of our drunk uncle. We're we're pushing the boulder up the hill. We're trying to do everything for everybody else. We're doing all these things that we suck at. Our reptilian brain comes out. And what do reptiles do when they are under attack? They fight or they flee. And we humans are not that far away from them because we have the exact same response. We come out fighting or we flee. And this is what's so fascinating about this is this is based off of your personality type. So lots of people talk about being an ambivert. This is why we can't necessarily be an ambivert. We always have a preference because it comes down to how your baby in the back seat shows up. If you are an extrovert, your baby wakes up and your reptilian response is to flee. So normally extroverts are out in the world and they're talking, they're being creative and they're, you know, they're sharing and hi, how are you? And connecting. When they are stressed out. I'll speak for myself. When I am stressed out, when extroverts are stressed out, we are, we're doing too many things that we suck at. We're doing too many details. We're doing all these drunk uncle activities. My reptilian brain wakes up and she wants to hide. She runs away. She doesn't want to get out of bed. It looks like depression. My baby really, really loves pizza and Netflix. I shut the world out. I literally shut my drapes sometimes. I'll pull my shades down and turn on Netflix, turn my phone off, eat some pizza. And this is, it's literally fleeing from the world. No, this is not good. Nope, it's not good. A lot of you are probably like, that doesn't sound good. Nope, it's not good. I can't do my life. I can't do this podcast. I can't go out and be a keynote speaker. I can't coach. I can't be in my front seat. When we allow the drunk uncle to take over our lives, and let me be clear, this is a choice. When you let the drunk uncle take over, when you choose to do the things that you suck at, you are doing such a disservice to yourself, to your family, and to your business, because inevitably, this is, it's inevitable, you guys, that The baby is going to wake up. So for extroverts, that means you're hiding from the world, that you're literally running away. Who wants that? Nobody wants that. That is not your best self. I don't want a drunk person or a baby running my business. I want a confident driver. I want that co-pilot and my driver running my life. Not a drunk person and certainly not a baby. But When I am in the wrong job, I am in the wrong relationship, I am doing things that I suck at, I can expect my baby in the backseat to wake up. So introverts, your baby in the backseat, guess what they do? They fight. Meaning you come out swinging, you get pissed. You get in people's faces. You might scream. You might yell. You might get over emotional. You might, I don't know. I I mean, so I'll just give an example. I was, I dated this guy years and years ago, quite a few years ago, probably four years ago. And he was an INFP, sweet, kind, sensitive, loving, all about the heart. When he would get stressed out or I would trigger him. So here's another fascinating part of this is that sometimes your partner in life or somebody in your life can also hurt your feelings or they can trigger you. So when he was either stressed out at work or I pissed him off or I pushed a button or something, he was doing stuff that he sucked at. He wasn't, you know, we weren't in a good place. His baby would wake up and he would get so mean. He was normally this loving, soft, kind human being, and he would come out swinging. He would raise his voice. He would literally say mean things to me. He would get in my face, and and instead of getting pissed at him, because I knew this, I would say, oh my God, 
okay, babe, slow down. What did I just do that is triggering this response? Or what's happening in your life? What can I do? I see this. And so everybody in my life knows this language about baby in the backseat. So if I am hiding from people in my life, they know, okay, what's going on, Jess? How can I help you out of this? How can I, what's going on? You're doing too much that you suck at. You're not returning texts. You're not on Facebook. You're not out being your, you know, extroverted self. And introverts would be the same way. When they come out and they're yelling or screaming or getting in your face or getting over emotional, we know that that person has then been triggered. I've worked with numerous clients over the years that have have had this experience, their children, and it breaks their heart. And typically, I don't know, you might be in your car actually crying right now and driving right now and thinking, oh my God, this is what I do with my kids. So if you're at a job all day doing stuff that you suck at, doing drunk uncle things, you probably come home and are not your best self. You are short if you're an introvert, and you might be screaming at your kids. You might be short-tempered and irritated and quick to yell and quick to scream. Or if you're an extrovert, you may come home and not be your best self because all you want to do is get in bed. And what a shame, what a shame on us that we are giving the most important people in our lives our worst selves our worst selves. We're giving them a drunk version of ourselves or a baby version of ourselves versus this confident front seat, wonderful part of ourselves. So I would be a horrible therapist. I think most of you know, I used to be a therapist and I did couples counseling and I would be a horrible therapist if I didn't say that at least 20% of the time, I'm an 80-20 girl, that 20% of the time the shit's going to happen. We're going to get our feelings hurt. We're going to be stressed out. We're going to be overwhelmed. Someone's going to hurt us. We're going to have baby in the backseat moments. And unfortunately, it's almost 20% of the time, maybe 10 to 20. I probably spend, I probably am 90, 10 these days because I live the life of my dreams. I love it. But that baby wakes up. I get stressed out. People hurt me. I go through breakups. Uh, I have clients that hurt my feelings. I mean, I'm a human being. So we're going to have those 20% moments in the backseat. We're going to have to learn how to care for our babies. And in my experience, babies need two things. (laughs) Our babies. I shouldn't say babies. Our babies. This part of our personality, they need two things. They either need to be nurtured and loved and rocked. Again, my baby really likes pizza and Netflix. So I oftentimes will take a baby in the backseat day. Instead of being forced back there, I will now learn that it's coming. Who Okay, who knows that feeling that it's coming, right? That you get, I don't know how to explain it on a podcast. That's the feeling that it is. <laughs> feeling of, oh my God, I'm gonna lose it. I'm about to scream. I'm about to freak out. Or for me, it's all I wanna do is hide. I don't want to see anyone. I want to get away. I want to fly away to Mexico. I actually just told somebody the other day, I'm going to go to Mexico by myself for three days and I'm not going to talk to a human soul. I'm feeling better now, so I don't have that feeling. But there's that feeling of you just want to run away or for introverts that you're about to explode. When we feel that coming on, we can learn how to head it off. And again, there's two reactions. One is you nurse it back to health. You take a baby in the backseat day. For introverts, it might be screaming and yelling. It might be going to a kickboxing class. It might be whatever you need to do. For me, again, pizza and Netflix. Or sometimes you've got to just get yourself back into your front seat. And so in the books, and I'll probably do a whole episode on this, about what it takes to get you back into your front seat. So for extroverts, it's spending time with people that you love. For me, it's dancing, moving my body, getting outside, going for a walk, getting my endorphins going, listening to amazing music. It gets me fired up. Before I do a podcast episode, I always listen to my favorite music to get myself into my front seat. We can force ourselves back into our front seat, which is not, you know, always the best tip because 
we got to feel the feelings. We got to be sad. We got to have pizza and Netflix days. We got to have baby in the backseat moments. So I'm not suggesting that. However, there are times like if I'm going to, you know, if I had a super stressful day, and I got to go do a keynote in front of a thousand people, I got to get my shit together. So I'll listen to some music. I'll move my body. I will force myself back into my front seat. Most introverts I know, that means taking a break, going away by themselves, taking a hotel night, reading, cooking. I know a lot of introverts that love to like shut out the world, have a glass of wine and do some cooking. So everybody's personality type requires something different to get them back into their front seats because everybody's personality type is different. There's 16 different personality types. So people's front seat looks different. People's drunk uncle looks different. People's baby in the back seat looks different. So I highly, highly recommend that you go take that assessment on my website, jessicabutts.com, read the books, do whatever. But obviously I will have tons more episodes about this, but this needed to be the beginning of your understanding of the front seat and the back seat. I'm going to talk about this for probably every single episode. I will mention front seat and back seat at some point. And so I hope that this has been helpful. I hope it's been educational. I know that when I learned this, it was very validating for me. And you can hear the cracking in my in my throat because it does, it triggers me still knowing those feelings, those times in our life when we're in our back seat. They're like, you know, for me, these were going through my divorce and sitting on the kitchen floor and knowing that my husband was out with other women and, 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 oh my God, those moments of just being lost and scared and desperate and, and, and making difficult decisions to cut those kinds of things out of my life so that I didn't live my life from this back seat. I didn't live my life in this baby in the back seat moment, but choosing to say, no, thank you. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm quitting this job because it's sucking the life out of me. I am leaving this marriage because it's making me fucking crazy. It's making me the worst version of myself. It's making me untrustworthy. It's making me question things. It's putting me in my head. It's making me think about details. Instead of being with somebody where I can be in my front seat, I can be silly and goofy and and be accepted for who I am. Those are tough choices. And as a listener, I don't know where you are in your journey, but I encourage you so much to keep listening, to share this with people that you might think are experiencing the same thing that may need to hear this. It is such an honor and such a privilege to be able to bring this content to you. I thank you so much for spending 37 minutes with me today, and I cannot wait to see you on the next episode where we dive really deep into the introversion and extroversion dichotomy. Thank you so, so much for listening. From the bottom of my heart, truly, thank you so much for listening. I know that you have a ton of options and the fact that you are taking time to listen to the Front Seat Life podcast means absolutely everything to me. If you're interested in learning more about the Front Seat Life way of life in the community, there's a couple ways that you can do that. First is always starting with your personality assessment tool. It's available on my website at jessicabutts.com. It's totally free and it will help you figure out your personality type so you'll have some idea of what we're talking about. Next is if you're interested in hiring me for a keynote or some coaching or or strategy days, or the fabulous and amazing Front Seat Life community. You can find out all about all of that at jessicabutts.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.